Welcome back to AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate Exam Study Guide Part 3. Through my study guide, I will be sharing the key AWS services and highly targeted exam topic under each service. In my last video, I have covered non S3 storage services like CloudFront and EC2. Let's review Route 53 and database services in this video. If you are looking for basic information like how and where to start for exam preparation, please check out my other YouTube video, AWS Certifications – How to Prepare for Exams. I know it is difficult to note down all information provided in this video. Be relaxed and let me know on how to get a free copy of my study guide at the end of this video. Let's move on to Route 53. It is a highly available and scalable domain name service from AWS. In Route 53, main focus should be on different types of DNS records including A, CNAME and ALIAS record. Use case for ALIAS record is the most important in all. Expect a question or two regarding how ALIAS record is used for naked domain or zone apex like example.com and how does it integrate with Elastic Load Balancer or CloudFront. Also be familiar with the difference between CNAME and A record and cost associated with each record type. Another important topic under Route 53 is routing policies. Focus on simple, weighted, latency, failover and geolocation routing policies and respective use cases. That might be a scenario based question from this subject. Routing policies work closely with DNS failover concept. DNS failover consists of two components, health checks and failover. Be familiar with different components of health check and how to create a metric based health check within Amazon Route 53. You can also configure DNS failover for elastic load balancers. To enable DNS failover for an ELB, create an alias record pointing to the ELB and set target health parameter to true. Remember, Route 53 supports failover across different AWS regions and weighted round robin policy provides capability to do A and B testing, sending a small portion of traffic to your server on which you have made a software change. I think we are well covered with Route 53 now. Let's move on to Amazon Relational Database Service or RDS. It is managed service to set up, operate and scale a relational database in the cloud. RDS provides six database engines to work with including Aurora, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, Postgres, MySQL and MariaDB. However, the exam does not focus them individually, more like a single service including all DB types. Be familiar with multi-AZ deployment and how it helps to reduce the duration of maintenance window. What changes need to be weighed for maintenance window? Some can be done immediately and some needs to wait for the maintenance window or service restart. There might be exam question regarding the possibility of upgrading storage of MS SQL. You cannot increase the storage size of MS SQL in later stage. So you have to provision it based on the anticipated future growth initially when you set it up. When creating a DB instance in VPC, you will need to select a DB subnet group. So be familiar with the concept. Also, you should have a clear understanding of read replicas and its limitations. Two different licensing models used by database like Oracle and MS SQL. Another important exam topic is backup and snapshots of DB. The automated backup automatically performs full daily snapshot of your data and DB snapshot are user initiated and enables you to backup your DB instance in a known state. Be familiar with limitation of both, including retention period, restoration process, cost association, and availability and performance of a DB during the backup. Also see how and when these backups get deleted and cost of keeping them. The next exam topic is security and encryption. Review how the RDS is provisioned in VPC, maintaining backend RDS DB instances in a private facing subnet with no internet access. 
Security groups play a main role in it. Amazon RDS supports encryption address for database instances using AWS Key Management Service. Amazon RDS for Oracle and SQL Server support transparent data encryption integration with AWS Cloud HSM. So make sure to review the above topics. Let's see what else we need to cover on non-RDS DB services. There might be a question or two from DynamoDB, Redshift and Elastic Cache. DynamoDB is an important topic along three. Make sure to understand the DynamoDB use cases and how it differs from RDS on scalability and performance factors. Basic knowledge of DB structure or format, read and write capacity units, read consistency models and pricing strategy is good to have. Redshift is a data warehousing solution from AWS and used for online analytical processing. Sometimes there might be a scenario based question where you need to select either RDS DB types or DynamoDB or Redshift. Also be aware of Redshift encryption with Cloud HSM and key management service. The last topic in database is Elastic Cache. Not as much in exam, but it is good to have basic understanding of when and where it is used. Two in-memory caching engine used by Elastic Cache, Memcached and Redis. Finally, we are done with DB services. Overall, expect between three to five questions from these topics. Enough for this video. We will review virtual private cloud and application services in the next one. As mentioned before, I will provide you the copy of my study guide. It is free. All you need to do is to sign up with your email address at signup.awspro.academy. I will then email you the study guide in 24 hours. Again, it's signup.awspro.academy. We don't spam your mailbox or provide your email address to any third parties. You can choose to opt out anytime. Thanks for your time. Please provide your feedback on this video. I will see you on the next video. Until then, good luck with your AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate Exam Preparation.